right, we are here at Our Lady of Fatima Church to get some early shots of the lighting before we get in here and replace all this. Uh, you can see around the lot, we've got some 400 watt metal halides here and there, um, spaced out quite a bit. Um, you may see some dark spots because there's a few of those that are out. Uh, something we're not going to have to worry about, bulbs dying when it comes to the LEDs. Um, so we're going to re be replacing these 400 watts with 150 watt uh, next gen 3 lights. Uh, we're going to be putting motion sensors, doing some some programming to adjust the lighting, making sure that we're not wasting power. You're gonna see the big difference just from the start from 400 watts down to 150. Uh, we've also got some 300 watt lights going up on the church around the main building on all the sides. And we're doing some solar lighting in the back. So we're gonna be doing quite a bit of work here and we wanted to show you the beginning so you can see the, the big change and what we end up with at the end. All right, um, so we we're showing you some more of the lights on the building here at the church. Um, we've got a 400 watt or what we believe is a 400 watt HPS floodlight behind me up on the wall. We've got some smaller little ones up in the corner. We're going to be replacing all these, um, kicking up the light here. It was nighttime. You can't really see much of anything out here. Uh, we're going to be going with some 300 watt lights. We may do set up something in those uh, motion sensors, something to manage some dimming if they want to bring the light levels down. But we're going to have a lot more light over here um, with a, a stronger fixture replacing these. Um, we're also going to have a nice 5000K where it's going to be consistent through the entire lot of the same um, bright white color as opposed to a mix of some of these corner lights look like they may be around a 4000 K. We've got the HPS. It's going to be 2000 to 3000, uh, 2500, somewhere around that range. So you get that orange look. So we're going to get it real consistent all the way around. Uh, replace all these lights to get us some good, nice lighting out here. We've got a little field here that's going to be able to get lit up real well with this light. Um, same thing around the back side of the building. Um, got a couple of the same lights that we've got right here above me pointed out in the parking lot and not much light out there at all. So we're going to see a big difference. All right, you can see we're not getting too much light here. Um, what we do really want to show is that when we get done, we're going to have some light in this area. So it's going to be safe for the patrons of the church to be coming out, getting in their cars, be able to see the, the door locks as they're getting in, um, easy movement around, feeling safe and comfortable uh, the way we like it with lighting. All right, uh, showing you a different section of the parking lot here. Uh, we do have another light out in the area. Um, but we wanted to show you um, the lighting as it is right now. We do have a meter out here um, right in the middle of the lot. We're hitting at about five lux, so about half a foot candle. Um, not a lot of light, but also something that, you know, we're keeping in mind as we're replacing these 400s, we could go up to 300 watt lights. Um, we are sticking with the 150s because we don't want to flood this with too much light. We want to keep the comfortable feel, but make sure people have enough light to see what they're doing without taking away from the architecture and the setting of the environment here. So one of the big things when it comes to lighting is making sure that you're not overdoing it at times too. We've got other areas of the lot on the back where we're going to be putting in more light um, so people can see what's going on. Um, we're also going to be putting in some solar lights in areas where there's no power and solar's the way to go. Makes it real easy when you've got an option like that. So um, making sure we don't overdo it in areas and making sure we get enough light in areas that need more is one of the key functions to making sure that we're doing good lighting and that's what we're planning to do here. All right, so we're mid install right now. We've got some of the lights up. Some of the lights are still coming. Um, we've got one light here, one of the two or the, the 150 watt next gen threes up right now. It's got the motion sensor on there. If you can see that with the camera, the little white cap on the base. Uh, down on the far side, we've got one of the old 250 watts. I uh, wanted to get some shots during the day so you can see the lights as they're up. And once it gets darker, we'll be able to see the real difference. Uh, they've already seen some of these lights up and are very happy with the increase in brightness. 
So we've got a, a nice bright light coming in here, replacing the old 250s. And we're gonna finish up the job, get the rest of them done. We've got quite a few more lights going up around here. But a great spot, lots of lights up, and we're excited to show you what it does at night. All right, um, so we do have the new lights installed. We got it dark enough with the lights on now. So we have these 150 next gen threes coming on. Uh, we wanted to show you through the parking lot as we're right underneath the light here. We're getting about a 140 lux or 14 foot candles. So fairly bright under there, but as we start spreading out in the lot, you'll see it looks fairly even through the lot. Um, big spacing on these poles. Um, but as we move out, we hit to about middle of the lot, maybe around 40 lux or four foot candles. Even on the far side where we're about as far as we can be from any pole, we're still at about 20 lux, um, two foot candles. So we've got pretty steady through the middle here of a range of about two to four or five foot candles through the majority of the lot as you get close to the poles also obviously it's going to be a little bit brighter um, with this spacing but we have plenty of light now um, with two foot candles out here on the side so where i can see my keys i can see what i'm doing um, no problem getting in and out of a car or whatever you need you can see what's in your hand i could read um, the meter no problem as well um, previously with the old lights the 250 metal halides we were getting one to two foot candles um, close to right underneath the lights. So we had hardly any light anywhere else. So a lot more light, a lot even distribution and plenty to see what you're doing with the new next gen threes. All right, we wanted to show off the sensitivity with these motion sensors. Um, right now, I am about 50 feet. We got the light up about 20 feet uh, from there. You are gonna see as I move forward, we've got this at 100% sensitivity right now, which should put us around the 45, 50 foot mark. Um, it's not gonna take me very long before I get close enough. This is picking up as I get about halfway. So not even that. Uh, you know, I, I'm getting right out to where we're getting a good distance um, from the light. Plenty of light turning on and I'm 40, maybe 45 feet from the pole. Pulls up, lights up 20 feet. So we've got a good 50 foot range on this sensor. One of the best sensors on the market. Um, you can't go wrong with these next gen 3 microwave motion sensors. All right, um, so we wanted to show you the power of these Next Gen 3 motion sensors. This is a top end microwave motion sensor, so it's gonna pick up anything. We've adjusted the settings here, so it's only gonna stay bright for about 10 seconds with motion. I've lowered the sensitivity sec so that it's barely catching me right at this range. So if I stay really still, I'm right at the end of the sensitivity, it's gonna drop down. Um, a lot of different settings with these. I'm not gonna go through how to do the settings. We have a separate video for that to go over that. Um, but we did wanna show you the, all the different changes. I'm moving around. We got it 100% when the light goes on. I can simply adjust my brightness setting. Quick press of a button. Now we're at 70% brightness when motion. Um, we can change the standby brightness time um, how bright it is, how long it's staying at full brightness. Uh, I'm gonna keep the sensitivity down so we can see the changes here. Um, but we change the standby time now, or standby dim level to 50% instead of 10%. And we're gonna see if I stay pretty still here for about seven, 10 seconds, it's gonna drop back down. We're now up at 50% instead of 10% on the brightness. So a lot of different settings, hold time, how long it's at 100% brightness. We can adjust the sensitivity. If I go up to 100% sensitivity, I can get quite a bit farther away out from the light before it starts picking me up. So we've got good range with the sensitivity. A lot of controls on the brightness, whether at full brightness uh, or whatever you want it set at with motion and standby times for how bright or dim you want it at that point. 
All right, um, so we wanted to show you these lights as they kick on with the motion sensors. Uh, you might hear the dance party in the background. The kids are having fun um, with a little party for themselves, so don't mind the music. Um, but we've got these 150 watt next gen threes up here with the motion sensors uh, nice thing with these lights and these motion sensors is that we've got these set up at 70 percent brightness and they're going to kick or at all, when there's motion and they go down to 30 percent when there's no motion um, so you're not getting a ton of light you can use the full 100 percent but you can also have the lights go down as low as 70 percent with motion um, depending on how much light you need in the area, you might want more light. Um, use the full 100%, drop it down to even 10% when there's no motion. Set the different times. You want a long hold time with motion where after there's motion, there's 10 seconds, one minute, 10 minutes, 30 minutes that it stays at full brightness. Set the hold time to infinity so it always stays a dim or a certain amount of time where it's at that dimmer level and then it shuts off completely. So you can really save that power, um, get some great Title 24 lights for you. Building here. Um, we did some industrial looking vapor type lights in the overhangs here. The old lights were getting a lot of moisture and water in them. Not gonna have that problem anymore. But our main focus for this is the two big floodlights we've got on the building behind us. Had a lot less light, did not see much of this yard out here previously. Now we've got two big motion sensor lights on it. Um, they're running at about 30% right now. Um, anybody who's in the area that's gonna set those off, we're gonna get a lot more light. So if there's people out in the grass playing around, anything like that at night, we've got plenty of light. It's still good lighting to see what's going on, even without light. All right, so we're gonna do a quick pro tips on these motion sensors. So gonna show you the sensor there's some LEDs in here blue ones so you can see what you're at when you're testing it at night uh, quick press on the send button you can notice that little red light in the motion sensor went off and the light went down a little bit that went with the settings that we have on here uh, real easy popping through settings here you press on and off to turn the LEDs on we can pop through the different brightnesses at motion we can go through how long it stays bright at with motion the dim setting 10 to 50 percent how long it stays there infinity one minute up to 10 minutes we've got a sensitivity setting so you can adjust it depending on your needs and we've got a daylight sensor in here that you can set to different lux so the light will come on at different times at night if you want it coming on at just as it starts to get dark or once it's nice and really dark you can adjust that on here and you can turn that on and off so if you want a photo cell service for dust to dawn you can use it if you don't you don't have to have it all right we are showing you some of the lights we're replacing here at our lady of fatima church um, this is the old lights that have been removed these are 250 watt metal halides enormous fixture just 250 watts the lights that we have going up here replacing these are 150 watt leds which are going to be a nice step up in power they wanted a little bit more light in their parking lots um, we also brought a 300 watt of the same next gen um, just to show you size wise by comparison this is our 300 watt versus the old 250 watt metal halide big difference there the old 250 watts still a huge compartment huge fixture versus the 300 watt which is twice as bright as the lights that are going up here so we've got a big difference a lot easier to handle when you're dealing with leds a lot smaller fixtures with a lot more power we're doing project wrap up here um, as you remember from before the install, not a lot of light out here. Some of these lights were out, really not getting much light in this parking lot, really dark in the whole area. We've got two of the big 300 watt next gen threes up here to really crank out the light in this parking lot. Um, you can see the big difference. 
don't even need the solar lights on the other side. These two 300s really get you good lights, so there's a lot more safety in this entire back lot. Um, much more light than there was previously. Just what they wanted, nice and safe. All right, so we picked out this light to show you the coverage of these lights. A lot of people, when they're looking on the website, they're asking, what's the coverage area of this light? What, how do I know how much space it covers? Well, if you look around here, you'll see it's not exact circles. We're not seeing the light completely drop off. Light's gonna keep moving out. Um, if I pulled the meter out, and we start moving away from the light, you're gonna see that the, the level of light continues to drop as we move away from the light itself, but we can't see that it's still visible all around. Um, we don't have a lot of lights um, that are coming in and combining with this light, so this one's a great one because it's kind of singled out for the lighting to show you what's going on. But as the light progresses out, We've still got plenty to see what we're doing. Um, we've got even coverage. You don't see it extremely bright right here and suddenly just dark over there. We want nice, even coverage. Um, but this is one of the main reasons why we don't show a specific coverage area on the lights because when it comes to lighting, it works a little different than that. We may have set coverage areas where we would focus on, um, but it's a lot bigger deal when it comes to crossover lighting Make sure we're getting good spacing um, to get these lights to combine all together so we're getting great light. This one right here is tilted up a little bit so we're getting some light as we move across the lot on the hill um, and getting plenty of light around on the ground everywhere we're at. So we've got great coverage here out of just a single light um, going plenty far for what we need with the focus of the light in the coverage area. Um, once again, when you need some help when it comes to coverage, give us a ring so we can help you out.